Hello and welcome to the Ridiculously Good VA Show with Tracy Daviero. If you are a virtual assistant or want to be one, this is the place to learn the tips and tricks you need to become a ridiculously good VA. I've been a part of the VA industry since 1998 and I'm excited to get to know you and help you build an amazing business. Let's go. Hey there, welcome to another episode of the podcast that teaches you how to be a ridiculously good virtual assistant. Today, we're going to talk about what to do when something goes wrong in your VA business. Today's quote is from Tony Robbins. Every problem is a gift. Without problems, we would not grow. Nothing ever goes right 100% of the time, but with a little bit of forethought and some plans and procedures, maybe too, we can make sure that we fix whatever goes wrong so that we can keep moving forward. Let's go. What do you do when something goes wrong in your VA business? How do we react to it? How do we respond to it? I'm not talking about something that you're doing for a client, like making a mistake with their work and that kind of thing. What I want to talk about in this episode is what happens when something unexpected happens. It's kind of funny that I chose a Tony Robbins quote for today because I'm not a really huge fan, but it is really perfect for this topic, I think. Without problems, it's true, we would not grow. How do we know how to create a procedure or a boundary or a process or make a rule if something doesn't go wrong to begin with. Problems are important, but the solving of them is the important part. How do you handle it when something goes wrong? I think we're all the same. At first, we're upset with ourselves, and then we try to move forward, even if we don't really know how. But if we're dealing with a lot of other stress, sometimes things get magnified, and that things that aren't so bad seem bigger than they are, and we think that maybe they can't be fixed all that easily. So let's talk about real stuff. Here are a few examples of the kinds of things I'm talking about. I messed up a discovery call. Has this ever happened to you? It has happened to me so many times. Not as many these days, thankfully, but in the beginning, when I started doing them, I messed up all kinds of them. What did I do wrong? Lots of things. But mostly I avoided talking money with a client while I was on the call. I used to have a sales job. I was a sales rep for a courier company. It was package delivery and like like local stuff across the city. All day long, we would go through our contacts and make cold calls, make warm calls, all phone calls to talk to people who we wanted to use our services. Some of them were initial calls, cold. Some of them were follow-up calls, warm. And some of them were actually check-in calls with clients. But we definitely spent most of our days on the phone, just like in the movies. Sounds fun, eh? It actually was a pretty fun job, and I learned so much stuff about business and people and sales. And I also learned about Tony Robbins, so maybe that's where that all got spoiled. But let me tell you that when I left that job a year and a half later, I never wanted to talk to anyone on the phone ever again, especially in a sales conversation. So when I started to try to find clients for my business, I shied away from contact from people, literally any other contact than email. So my sales conversations were not great. Well, they were. I did them. I made a lot of contacts. But I wanted to move so far away from talking money and handling objections, which was a big issue in the sales job, that I rarely did it on the phone call itself. I convinced myself that sending a detailed proposal after the call was more than sufficient. Well, sometimes it was and sometimes it wasn't. When I started working with a business coach, we looked at my approach or lack of it, and immediately saw that it was not the right way for me to get clients. Instead of selling, I started identifying if I could help the person on the other end of the phone. If I could, I told them I could. And then I asked them what their budget was, and then we went from there. This was so much wrong at first, though. It took me years to work with a business coach, so I bombed a lot of discovery calls. And imagine, once I changed how I was doing my discovery calls, I got clients. Ooh, lots of clients. If you have messed up a discovery call, or if you're messing up all of them, what is going wrong? Are you doing it all the time? Or did it just happen the one time? If it's only once, how can you save that call? Can you save that call? All you need to do is get back in touch with that client. And sometimes I did that as well. You can ask them for a do-over if you want. Clients totally get that we are human. Or you can just make a plan to start doing it differently moving forward. Create a checklist if you missed something important. Change the way you approach the calls, not selling, but helping. Make sure you talk budget with the client on the call. You can't know for sure that you can help them if you don't have any idea what they're expecting to spend for help. That's number one. 
Number two, I can't pay my expenses or myself. This is a big thing that can go wrong in your business. If you're operating on razor thin margins, you have very little room for things to go wrong. How did you set your rates? Did you factor in expenses when you were setting your rates or did you just kind of hope that you wouldn't have to spend that much money? Some VAs, so many VAs actually, do not do this. We try to charge as little as possible so that our clients will hire us. Hello, I did this too. If you're doing this, you really need to take stock. We have to be thinking about what our business needs to be profitable. Yes, we need to think about our clients, but our business is what we're trying to build. We can't stay in business if we're not profitable. I know most of us just want to work from home and get paid. It seems so simple, but we are in fact running a business. You can't pay yourself, your expenses, and anything else you need to run your business if you don't bring in enough revenue. I still hear VAs charging $25 an hour. I charged $25 an hour 15 years ago. And my business coach at the time told me it wasn't enough then. We doubled my rates. I was charging $50 an hour 15 years ago. So how do you fix this? You have to stop. You have to redo your rates right now. Raise your rates for your existing clients. Charge more to incoming clients. You have to run your business. Identify your expenses. A lot of EAs don't have a lot of real expenses and they're still suffering because of taxes or programs they've taken that haven't helped them find clients. If you aren't earning enough money, you have to fix that problem right away. What can you do now? What can you do to fix it moving forward? What did you learn in programs that you've taken that you have not implemented? That is really the place to start. Figure out how to find clients that will pay you. If you have confidence issues around charging a higher rate than $25 per hour, you do need to work with someone who can help you identify why you are worth that and why you need to charge that for your business in order to be successful. Number three, I lost work and or wasted my time. This is probably the number one issue I hear from VAs, not necessarily the losing of the work, although I will tell you about that, um, but the wasting of the time. It happened to me recently, losing work twice, and it definitely wasted my time. Here's what happened. I do my podcast notes in Trello. I spend a lot of time on my notes before I record, and then I use them as a script when I record my podcast, like right now. I do some research while I make my notes, and I type everything out as I go, but I write them into a comment on a Trello card, which does not auto-save. So I have to remember to save the comment occasionally so I don't lose my work. No problem, right? That sounds easy enough. Yes, it does. In fact, sound very easy. But remember when I just told you that it happened to me twice? It did. Not once, but twice. Did I forget to save the comment at all and closed it and went off to do something else? And of course, I came back to no notes. And did you know that Trello doesn't autosave? I think I mentioned that. It also doesn't archive anything. When it's gone, it's gone. Believe me, the first time I did that, I investigated every ounce of Trello and I hit up support. Nothing. Could not recover what I had done. So I had to redo my notes, every single one of them. And all was well until I actually friggin' did it again a couple of weeks ago. Unreal. Yep, same exact thing. I was on a roll with my notes, not really paying attention because I was following a train of thought, and I did it again. Was it the end of the world that I lost my notes? No, of course it wasn't. Most mistakes are not the end of the world. But it did waste a lot of time for me the first time and the second time. So how can I ensure that it doesn't happen again? Because clearly I can't trust myself to just remember to save. That was my fix the first time it happened. I have to change where I do my notes. It's a pretty simple fix, isn't it? To something that auto saves. Hello, Microsoft Word. It's a simple, simple change that will ensure that this never happens again. But these are the things that we need to do. We need to make those steps and say, I need to change the way I'm doing things. That's a big way to not lose your work. But another way that VAs waste time is through doing intense, unending research. It's unbelievable to me, guys, how much VAs, how much time VAs spend researching things. And I am absolutely not accusing you. I am putting myself squarely into that bucket with you guys. I do it all the time, but it really is wild. We research the heck out of stuff. And it's a waste of time almost every single time. 
Yes, it is. Sorry, I thought I heard you say no, it's not. So how do we fix losing time when it comes to going down rabbit holes or still looking for that one more fact or one more piece of information? We have to set ourselves time limits for research and we set a goal for the research too. You don't say, I'm going to investigate CRMs for my business. While that sounds logical, it sets no parameters for you. It sets no time limit and it doesn't really say what you're trying to achieve. So instead, the goal is I'm going to compare three CRMs to see which one is right for my business. I'm going to poll my colleagues in one Facebook group, not 10, and I'm going to spend 60 minutes total gathering data on the three systems, 20 minutes each, and then 30 minutes doing my comparisons, pros and cons list in order to make a decision. That's how you don't waste time. In 90 minutes, you will have all of your work done based on your parameters that you set for yourself. You'll have some input from your colleagues, from the ones you trust the most, and you can make a decision and you're done. That's how we make sure that we're not losing time with the things that we are spending too much time on. Make sense? I think it makes sense. These are three really different scenarios of how things go wrong, um, but I think they can give you some insight for things that might be happening in your business, either once or all the time. I hope so. Anyway, let me know what you think. Ideally, no matter what goes wrong, here's what you have to do to fix it. Number one, identify what went wrong. Is it a one-time thing or is it a consistent issue? If it's a one-time thing, what can you do to fix it? If it's consistent, what more do you need to have in place to stop it from happening over and over again? Number two, take responsibility for your part in it. Just as we would apologize to our client if we messed up something of theirs, we have to identify what our role in it is for ourselves when something goes wrong for us. Feeling bad for yourself is fine, but it has to be short-lived. Nothing gets fixed if we wallow in our misery. If it is someone else's fault for, or something like a software issue, then you make sure you know that too. Sometimes things just break or don't do what they're supposed to. It's not your fault and you have to realize that as well. Number three, make a plan to fix it. This is always obviously the most important part. Move forward. Get out of the bad place. If you have had this issue before, then it's even more important to address it. Put some new safeguards in place to fix it in the future. Nobody wants to always hope that nothing goes wrong, but tech is tech. I use Zoom every day and it often messes up. It's not my fault, but I still am responsible to fix it if it messes up. That's when you know it's procedure time in your business. Number four is ask for help. This is my last point, but it should always be the first, I think. It's almost always quickest to fix a mistake by getting help. Support chats are the bomb. Colleagues are amazing. Yes, you can do hours of research to fix a problem on your own, but is that really the best use of your time? No, it's not. Go back and see mistake number two in this episode. Find your people, your trusted community, and get their help to fix whatever has gone wrong. The bottom line is you have to take action when something goes wrong. The same as you would if you make a mistake for a client. It should become your highest priority right then to fix. And you should have a plan for everything that can go wrong. But maybe these aren't your problems. Maybe your problem is you can't find clients. Maybe your problem is that you have too many clients. Maybe your problem is that you suck at time management. All of these can be handled in the ways that I described today. Something doesn't have to go wrong but something maybe isn't going right. And that's your problem. But I can help you fix your problems. Let's circle back to Tony's quote for today. Problems are a gift that help us grow. Of course, I'm paraphrasing. I can help you find clients. I can help you manage having too many clients. I can help you with your time management. I can help you stop losing time or losing work. I can help you pay yourself and set your rates properly. I can help you get better at discovery calls. That's what I'm here for. It's the only reason I'm here at all, as you know, to help you become a ridiculously good VA. I've helped hundreds of VAs through challenges, just like the ones you're having, and I've helped them grow their business and build the lifestyle that they dream of. I would love to do the same thing for you. We can work together privately or in my monthly mastermind group or in my group coaching program, or you can enroll in some of my self-study trainings. I have plenty of options to help you get where you want to go. Check them out in the show notes for this episode. Thanks for tuning in this week. I'll see you next time. 
Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Ridiculously Good VA Show. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. For more great resources for your VA business, visit my website at yourvamentor.com. I'll see you back here next time.